Felicitas, Elegy on a Friend Drowned in the Irish Channel, J. Milton. This is grief poured out in verse and tribute to a friend gone much too soon. They grew up together, but Lycidas left for a sea adventure and had an unknown end, except that he is drowned. We should sing for Lycidas in the manner of how he could sing so very well. His talent and friendship deserve an honored gathering to remember him. The shepherd gathers his thoughts and all the stories and tales he can use to honor the memory of his friend. We may mourn, but remember how the sun itself drops into the ocean where Lycidas' body lies, and remember he is with the saints now. We will weep no more and continue to live life as we know it. Lycidas, Elegy on a Friend Drowned in the Irish Channel Yet once more, O ye laurels, and once more, ye myrtles brown, with ivy never sere, I come to pluck your berries harsh and crude, and with forced fingers rude, shatter your leaves before the mellowing year. Bitter constraint and sad occasion, dear, compels me to disturb your season due, for Lycidas is dead, dead ere his prime, young Lycidas, and hath not left his peer. Who would not sing for Lycidas? He knew himself to sing and build the lofty rhyme. He must not float upon his watery beer, unwept and welter to the parching wind, without the mead of some melodious tear. Begin then, sisters of the sacred well, that from beneath the seat of Jove doth spring, begin, and somewhat loudly sweep the string, hence with denial vain and coy excuse. So may some gentle muse with lucky words favor my destined urn, and as he passes turn and bid fair peace to be, be to my sable shroud, for we were nursed upon the self same hill, fed the same flock by mountain shade and rill, together both ere the high lawns appeared under the opening eyelids of the morn, we drove a field and both together heard what time the gray fly winds her sultry horn. Battening our flocks with the fresh dews of night, off till the star that rose at evening bright. Toward heaven's descent had sloped his westering wheel. Meanwhile, the rural, rural ditties were not mute, tempered to the oaten flute. Rough satires danced and fawns with cloven heel. From the glad sound would not be absent long. And old Demetus loved to hear our song. But, oh, the heavy change, now thou art gone. Now thou art gone, and never must return. Thee, shepherd, thee the woods and des desert caves, With wild thyme and the gadding vine o'ergrown, And all their echoes mourn, The willows and the hazel copses green, Shall now no more be seen, Fanning their joyous leaves, leaves to thy soft lays as killing as the canker to the rose, or taintworm to the weanling herds that graze, or frost to flowers that their gay wardrobe wear, when first the white thorn blows, such licitous thy loss to shepherd's ear. Where were ye, where were ye nymphs, when the remorseless deep closed o'er the head of your loved licitous, for, not, <clears throat> for neither were ye playing on the steep, where your old bards, the famous druids, lie, nor on the shaggy top of Mona High, nor yet where Diva spreads her wizard stream, I me, I fondly dream, had ye been there, for what could that have done? What could the muse herself at Orpheus bore, the muse herself for her enchanting son, whom universal nature did lament, when by the rout that made the hideous roar, his gory visage down the stream was sent? Down the swift Hebrus to the lesbian shore, Alas, what boots it with incessant care To tend the homely slighted shepherd's trade, And to strictly meditate the thankless muse? Were, were it not better done as others use? To sport with Amaryllis in the shade, Or with the tangles of Niera's hair? 
fame is the spur that the clear spirit doth raise, that last infirmity of noble mind, to scorn delights and live laborious days, but the fair geared on when we hope to find, and think to burst out into sudden blaze, comes the blind fury with the abhorred shears, and slits the thin-spun life, but not the praise. Phoebus replied and touched my trembling ears, Fame is no plant that grows on mortal soil, <clears throat> nor in the glistering foil. Set off to the world, nor in broad rumor lies, but lives and spreads aloft by those pure eyes, and perfect witness of all judging Jove, as he pronounces lastly on each deed, of so much fame in heaven expect thy need. O fountain Arethus, and thou honored flood, smooth sliding Mencius, crowned with vocal reeds, that strain I heard was of a higher mood, and now my oat proceeds, and listens to the herald of the sea that came in Neptune's plea. He asked the waves and asked the felon winds, what hard mishap hath doth doomed this gentle swain, and questioned every gust of rugged wing, wind, wings that blows from off each beaked promontory. They knew not of his story, and sage Hippodes their answer brings, that not a blast was from his dungeon strayed, the air was calm, and on the level brine, sleek Panop with her all her sisters played. It was that fatal and perfidious bark, built in the eclipse and rigged with curses dark, that sunk so low that sacred head at thine. Next, Camus, reverend sire, went footing slow, his mantle hairy and his bonnet sedge, inwrought with figures dim, and on the edge, like to that sanguine flower, inscribed with wool. Ah, who hath reft, quoth he, my dearest pledge, last came and last did go, the pilot of the Galilean seat lake, two massy keys he bore of metals twain, the golden ops, the iron shuts amain. He shook his mitred locks and stern bespake, how well could I have spared for thee, young swain, enow of such as for their belly's sake creep and intrude and climb into the fold of other care they little reckoning make than how to scramble at the shearer's feast and shove away the worthy bidden guest blind mouths that scarce themselves know how to hold a sheephook or have learned aught else the least that to the faithful herdsman's art belongs what reeks it them what need they they are sped and when they list their lean and flashy songs, great on their scrannel pipes of wretched straw, the hungry sheep look up and are not fed, but swoln with wind and rank mist they draw, and the rank mist they draw, wrought inwardly and foul contagion spread, besides what the grim wolf with privy paw daily devours apace, and nothing said, but that two-handed engine at the door stands ready to smite once, and smite no more. Return, Alpheus, the dread voice is past. That shrunk thy streams, return, Sicilian muse, and call the veils and bid them hither cast, their bells and flowerets of a thousand hues, ye valleys low where the mild whispers use, of shades and wanton winds and gushing brooks, on whose fresh lap the swart star sparely looks. Throw hither all your quaint enameled eyes, that on the green turf suck the honeyed showers, and purple all the ground with vernal flowers. Bring the wrath primrose that forsaken dyes, the tufted croto and pale jessamine, the white pink and the pansy freaked with jet, the glowing violet, the musk rose and the well-attired woodbine, with cowslips wane that hang the pensive head, and every flower that sad embroidery wears, bid Amaranthus all his beauty shed, and daffodillies fill their cups with tears, to strew the laureate hearse where Lysid lies, for so to interpose a little ease, let our frail thoughts dally with false surmise, ay me, whilst thee the shores and soundling seas, Wash far away where'er thy bones are hurled. 
whether beyond the stormy Hebrides, where thou perhaps under the whelming tide visitest the bottom of this monstrous world, or whether thou to our moist vows denied sleep'st by the fable of Belarus old, where the great vision of the guarded mount looks toward Neme and coast and Bayona's hold. Look homeward, angel, now, and melt with Ruth, and, O ye dolphins, waft a hap hapless youth, Weep no more, woeful shepherds, weep no more, for Lycidas, your sorrow is not dead. Sunk though he be beneath the watery floor, so sinks the day star in the ocean bed, and yet anon repairs his drooping head, and tricks his beams, and with new spangled ore, flames in the forehead of the morning sky. So Lycidas sunk low, but mounted high, through the dear might of him that walked the waves where other groves and other streams along, with nectar pure his oozy locks he laughs, and hears the unexpressive nuptial song in the blessed kingdom's meek of joy and love. There entertain him all the saints above in solemn troops and sweet societies that sing and singing in their glory move and wipe the tears for ever from his eyes. Now, Lycidas, the shepherds weep no more, henceforth thou art the genius of the shore. In thy large recompense and shalt be good to all that wander in that perilous flood. Thus sang the uncouth swain to the oaks and rills, while the still morn went out with sandals gray. He touched the tender tops of various quills, with eager thought warbling his Doric lay. And now the sun had stretched out all the hills, and now was dropped into the western bay. At last he rose and twitched his mantle blue, to morrow to fresh woods and pastures new.